What's up guys, this is Cody here. And today I'm gonna to be going over the main features that we're going to see in iOS 9.3. So if you guys haven't heard, iOS 9.3 was released today during the Apple event. Now keep in mind, if you are a jailbreaker, then you do not want to upgrade to iOS 9.3. So go ahead and stay on iOS 9.2.1 if you're on that firmware, if you're not already jailbroken. But if you're not jailbroken, then stay on 9.2.1 and hopefully we're gonna see a jailbreak here in the near future. But let's go ahead and get into the main features of iOS 9.3. So first and foremost, we have a brand new feature in iOS 9.3 called Night Shift. So if you guys have heard of Flux before, this is exactly what Night Shift is for iOS 9.3. So basically what it does is during uh, nighttime, it actually is going to warm up the colors of your device. So normally you have a nice blue color that looks really nice and vibrant and everything pops and looks really good. But if you wanna warm up the colors on your entire display, then this is going to make it a whole lot easier on the eyes and supposedly it's supposed to make you sleep a whole lot better. So the way to access this is just go into your settings, then go to display and brightness, and then you can see night shift right there. So you can turn this on scheduled, so you can schedule this from a specific time frame if you wanna do that. You can also go here to manually enable it until tomorrow just by toggling that on. And then here is the slider. So basically less warm or more warm right here. So the cool thing about this is they actually added a toggle right here at the bottom as well. So just to give you an idea of what this does, if you haven't actually used Flux before or Night Shift, then you can just toggle on this right here and it's going to, as you can see right there, warm up the colors on the device. And this just makes it so much easier on the eyes, especially at nighttime when you're in bed, just kind of browsing the internet before you fall asleep. So this is one of the main features that everybody is really excited about. And I am myself as well, just because it's really nice to have something that's already integrated into iOS rather than having to get something externally. So now let's go ahead and talk about the Notes app improvements. So the main feature that you're gonna get in the Notes app is the new password protected notes. Now this isn't going to lock the entire application down, it's going to allow you to lock specific notes that you have within your Notes app. So for instance, if we go ahead and go into our Notes app and then we open up one of these uh, notes that I have here, I've basically just scribbled some stuff, but basically how you lock this is you just tap on the share sheet right there and then you'll notice that you can lock the note. So once you do that, you can see that you enter your password, you verify it, and then you can actually put in a hint if for some reason you have a tendency to forget your password. Now you can also use Touch ID uh, for this as well. So let's just put in Quart, Quart, and the hint's gonna be LOL, just because. Now let's go into here, and you can see that the lock has been added. So once we get out of this note, you can see that there's a little lock right there. It's actually unlocked right now. So if we tap on it, it's going to be unlocked. But all you have to do, tap on that lock and now it's locked. So now when we tap on view note, we can either enter the passcode or we can actually just use touch ID right there. Now there's also been some changes to the news app. So if you guys use the news app, which I don't use it all that much, but the actual new features that we have here are pretty cool. Now you have a new gesture on specific stories. So you can just swipe to the left here and you can see you can like it, save it, or share it. Or if you swipe to the right, then you can dislike it, mute the channel, or report it. So it just kind of gives you some more options there to either better suit your for you section, or if you wanted to share a specific article. Now another nice change is the ability to play videos right within the for you section. So if we go ahead and swipe through here, if we see a video, so here's a video, we don't have to actually go to the article just by tapping on this and then opening it up. It'll actually play the video right there within your for you uh, section. So that's pretty nice as well. You also notice when I tap on one of these articles that we actually get a text size change. So if we wanted to change this to a larger text size, then we can do so just by tapping on that, just to make it a little bit easier to read. We also had some changes in the health app. So this is another application that I don't use all that much. But if we go into the health app, you can see right here that we can go to our dashboard. So let's just say that we wanted to look at specific categories. So if we go in here and let's say that we wanted to look at sleep, if we tap on sleep and tap on sleep analysis, you'll see that we actually get third party applications right here, giving us suggestions of what applications actually work with sleep analysis in the health app. Of course, this works for other categories as well. So if we go back here and let's just say we go into workout, uh, we'll just tap on this and you can see more third party applications that you can use for this particular category. Now, if you have an Apple watch, you'll also see uh, those three move, exercise and stand activity data and the goals from your Apple watch 
displayed here on the dashboard. Now this isn't my main uh, daily driver, so I don't have my Apple Watch paired with it, but you would see it right here on the dashboard. Now here on the springboard, you can actually press and hold on the health app right here to get those quick actions. So of course it's only gonna work for the iPhone 6S and 6S Plus, but you can tap right here to show the dashboard or show your medical ID. Of course I haven't set this up because again, this isn't my daily driver, but this would show all your pertinent information if you had that set up right here. Now you can also access the medical ID straight from the lock screen as well. So if you swipe over here, you can tap on emergency and then tap on medical ID and it's gonna have all your info right there. Now in the music app, you can now watch music videos on the iPad in full screen. And you also see here that I'm playing some music down here, but if I tap on this and then I tap on the actual uh, name of the song right here that's playing, it's actually going to take me directly to the album. So actually before this, it was just taking you to a five star rating so you can actually rate the song or whatever. But now if you tap on the now playing song, then it's going to take you to the album. Now here in the photos, I just took this awesome live photo. So you can see right here when I press on it, we have my fingers wiggling right there. But now in iOS 9.3, what this allows you to do is actually duplicate this live photo into a single image. So it makes it easier uh, to share. So if we tap right here and then we tap on the share sheet, you can see that there's a duplicate button right there. So if we tap on that, you can duplicate as a still photo. And then if we tap on it right here, there it is. You also have the ability to share live photos right here. Uh, through airdrop or messaging as well. So that's really nice. I don't think I've ever opened iBooks in my entire life, but now with iBooks, you can actually import not just iBooks, but PDFs as well. So since I don't have any iBooks, PDF is actually a little bit more useful to me, but I still don't know if I'm gonna be using it for that reason. There's also been some education improvements, which basically 9.3 is introducing a preview of shared iPad that's gonna enable multiple students to use the same iPad at different times throughout the day. So basically you would have just a bunch of uh, different usernames and that specific student would just log into their username and the teacher or administrator would obviously have uh, complete control over that if they wanted to. So they could screen view, they can open up specific applications for that particular user or basically do anything that an administrator would do that had several users. CarPlay also got some improvements. So Apple Music members are now going to have access for their quote unquote for you section in CarPlay, as well as the ability to use a new nearby screen and maps to quickly find gas, parking, restaurants, coffee, or just basically any other driving essentials. Now there was an update to Siri as well. So now Siri supports Finnish, Hebrew, and Malay, which is funny because I still can't get her to support my English. I'm not sure I understand. See what I mean? A few other small changes is Apple Pay has a small icon in the bottom left hand corner to basically show what app your card is associated with. You also have a few more quick actions like I showed you on the health app as well as settings right here. It's going to allow you to get into your battery, Wi-Fi, or Bluetooth. And of course 9.3 is going to include various other bug fixes as well as performance and stability improvements. Now I've hit all the big changes here, but if you wanna see the release notes, I'll be sure to put a link in the description below. You guys can check that out for yourself. But I hope you guys enjoyed this video. And if you did, make sure you smack that like button. I would really appreciate it. Of course, if you guys wanna stay up to date with everything Apple or just random tech reviews that I like to do, then be sure you subscribe and I will see you guys in the next video. Peace.